exercise to do now. Easy and straightforward exercise. It doesn't, um, you don't have to do a lot of things this way. Um, you just need to find out which of the statement is incorrect. So don't try and answer the whole expected values. Read the question, it says, only the expected cell for youth and girls. So it means you need to be calculating the expected value for this. What you need to also realize with this table is there is no total. So you must calculate the total first for the table. Then calculate youth and girls expected value. So you will say the row total multiply by column total divide by N. So which your n will be the grand total step now and then option number two is asking you what is the null hypothesis you know what the null hypothesis always have to state is this the correct way of stating the null hypothesis for the alternative is this the correct way of stating the um, the alternative hypothesis Remember, you need to also do the degrees of freedom. Your degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus number of columns one. Minus one. <laughs> yes, so you need to answer that one. And then you need to do chi-square test distribution. Is it asymmetrical? Remember when we look at people on the chi-square, it looks like this. So if you go to the, the graph that they drew for the chi-square table, does it look like a symmetrical? Mine looks symmetrical in this way that I've drawn it. Let's, let's change it. So this is how chi-square looks like. Is it a symmetrical? The tail goes to the left, to the right. Is it a symmetrical? This is a chi-square distribution. Is it a symmetrical distribution? Then you need to say that. Okay, so that is your exercise. Uh, we'll come back in first one to do the feedback.
Okay. I gave you more extra more minutes because I thought you might take longer. So did you calculate the totals? What is the total for girls? It's 78. 70? 70, 78. 70. Total, for, total for boys? 122. 122. And then the grand total will be? 200. 8 plus is 10. 38. It's 200. And then? Yeah. I'm not going to do the total for beat, for growth, for I just want the total for youth. Total for youth? 38. 38. It's 38. So to answer number one, row total times column total divided by N. What is the row total? For 78. Our column total? 38 divided by 200. What do you get? Fourteen point eight two. It's fourteen point eight two, which means this is correct. Number two, it says the null hypothesis states that gender and magazine preference are independent. Is this correct? Yes. It is correct because always in your null hypothesis, it should state that independent. Therefore, it means for the alternative, it will say the opposite. In this instance, it says alternative is dependent. Is this correct? Yes. Yes, because it's the opposite of independent. And the degrees of freedom, how many rows do we have? We have uh, two rows. We have two rows minus one. And how many columns do we have? Four columns. We have four minus one. Two minus one is one, and four minus one is, one is three. three. Three times one is? Three. Three. And four, it means that is correct which leaves us with the last one. The chi-square distribution is symmetric. It cannot be symmetric because it has an extending tail to the right, so which makes this is incorrect. Uh, a chi-square distribution, it is a positively skewed, distribution or it is skewed to the right. And that is your chi square. That's easy né? to answer some of the chi square questions. So now comes your assignment assignment questions, which I can <laughs> So this is a contingency table with fake news media and personality. <clears throat> they are asking you to calculate the expected frequency for social media and politica and politician. Asking you to calculate as well the expected frequency and traditional. Uh, the expected frequencies for traditional media and sports stars. They also asking you what is the observed frequency for traditional media and politician. Then number four, they're asking you what is the null hypothesis. And number five, they're asking you are there two degrees of freedom. So you need to calculate the degrees of freedom for that one. So remember your expect how to calculate the expected value, the row total times column total divided by N. 
your degree of freedom is given by row two, number of rows minus one and number of columns minus one. I'm going to give you five minutes for that question. But if you are done, please don't wait long. Just tell me done, 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 so that I can have an idea of how many people are done so we can move. There are more questions as well. Yes, 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 I am done. I'm done. Others, are you still busy or are you just going to listen to what we are telling you? I think going forward, I'm going to ask individual to, we are six in this. So every time we have a question, all six of us who are here, uh, excluding me, okay, all six of you who are here in 
let me not say us, all six of you who are here in the session, you will at least give me an answer for each one of the questions. So I hope you are ready. Whether it's right or wrong, remember we want to help you understand if you are lost. Masa, do you agree? Any guest, do you agree? Mabitela, Ma, Ma, Mbitia, I hope you agree. And Rebecca, do you agree? I know that Sam always talk. I don't know about the others. Oscar, do you agree? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. So I'm waiting for my side, Rebecca and Marcella to show me that they agree. Oh, and Bitia. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we do. We don't have a choice. <laughs> yes. yes, Rebecca. Yes. Masa, are you with us? And Bitia, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Yes. There we go. Yes, I'm here. Yes, yeah, all of you, you are in. Okay, so let's do, we'll start with the this one. There are five questions. So the other one, we don't have. Uh, Sam, you are excused from answering this question. No debt. Okay. Who wants to do with number one? The expected frequency for social media and politician? I'll do number one now. I'll go. Okay. Uh, let's give the ladies first. Let's do it that way. So, since I can't see who's speaking, uh, who wants to go? Was it you, Ne? Yes, ma'am. No, it was Rebecca. Oh, it was Rebecca. So, Rebecca number one. Okay, the expected frequency. So, I took uh, the three zero one five multiplied by the 1050 as a social media and politician divided by 4000 and I got 791.44 and therefore number one is correct correct yes okay and Oscar Yeah, I'll do number, number two. two. Yes. I took uh, the 985 times it by 665, the sports star, divided by 4000. Then I got 163.75625, which I round off. It come to 163.76. Which makes number two correct. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Who's taking number three? Martha and Mbizia and N.E. Martha, number three. What is the observed frequency for traditional media and politicians? Uh, I got I got two five eight points. Remember the observed frequency is the value they give you. It's okay. the value they give you in the table. It's your joint joint value for politician and traditional media where they both meet that's the value which one is that it's 350 yes it's correct so you're saying it's 350 yes there we go this year number four <laughs> Uh, 
Hello, Mbizia. I don't know your full name. I can only call you by the name I see on the screen. Okay, NE, you want to go for that number four? Okay, the 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 null hypothesis uh, it can't be dependence. It's independent, so that one's wrong. That one is incorrect. And we were looking for the incorrect answer. But just for interest sake, the degrees of freedom is equal to two. Yeah, Our number of rows, we have two minus one. Our number of columns, one, two, three. There were three. Therefore, that would have been correct as well. So there is one person in this group who went silent <laughs> on us. Okay. Continuing. <laughs> Also, gonna give you five more minutes as well. All what they are asking you is to confirm if any of this statement is correct in terms of the critical value. Uh, we didn't do this question. I will. I will deal with that just now when we do the answer as well. But for now, what you are expected to do is see if the critical value, so you go and find critical value of 0, 0,10 and the degrees of freedom. So what is your degrees of freedom from here? We calculated the degrees of freedom before, which we found that was two. So you're going to go and find the critical value for each one of the statements in order for you to find out which one is incorrect. When you are done, say, you are done so that you know that you have completed all of them. Five more minutes. So
I am done.
Okay. Uh, are we all done? I had only one person saying done. The rest? Are you guys done? Talk to me. I'm not done, still struggling with the tables. Um, are you still busy? Are you guys still busy? I am. Done, ma'am. Okay. I'm going to help that lady who said they are struggling with the table. So we're going to show you how to do the critical value for number one. So it says it's 10% and we need the degrees of freedom. Remember, you're going to ignore that part. So our alpha is 0, 0,10, so which is that one. Our degrees of freedom is two. So for all of them, the degrees of freedom will always be two. So you just need to alternate for every one of them. So for for that will be 4,606. You see how to use the table. Okay, sorry ma'am. So how do we determine the two? How do we get two? The two, we, we got it because we also calculated it from the previous question. Remember the previous question was asking oh, okay. there are two degrees of freedom. This is a continuation. Okay. And how you calculate okay. the degrees of freedom, you found the two. So okay. you just use the degrees of freedom and alpha for every one of them. Okay, no, I got you. Thank you. Okay, while you got me right there, what is for number <laughs> two? At 5%, that will be at 0, 0,05. So you need to find your chi square at 0, 0,05 and the degrees of freedom of two. So you need to look for 0, 0,05. 0, 0, 0,05, okay. Uh, so, and two, so it will be that 5.991. So that means option number two is also two. correct. Correct, yes. So option two is correct. And who wants to check option three, which is 2.5? What is 2.5? Two point five is zero point two five. Zero point zero two five. Option three is correct, ma'am. Op option three will be correct, and then option four, which is zero point zero one. That one's also correct, ma'am. She is 9.210. So all of them are following one another, if that one. So 
which leaves us with one final question, which says, which says, uh, as the level of as the level of significance increases or decreases, the critical values decreases. So, if we look at all these values, so our level of significance, which is that, if it decreases. So if it moves from 0, 0,1 to 0, 0,01, it's decreasing. Does that uh, does also the critical value decrease or increase? It increases. The critical value increases because the answer you can see from the table here yeah, it shows we started with the 4.60605, we end up with 9.210. So it increased from four to nine. So that means this will be option number five will be the incorrect option. Okay. So I think now we're going to almost the last bit of the questions. which will be the last one. So this one you can do on your own. You will need to go and calculate the chi-square test. So it means the first thing you need to do here is to go and calculate the test statistic, uh, sorry, the expected value for every value that is on there. For 1,800, 700, 515, 485, 350, and 150. You will need to go and calculate the expected value for all of them. So you calculate the expected value, and once you have calculated the expected value, you can calculate the, the chi-square. Oh, sorry, I must make this a presentation mode so that I can write. So you will need to calculate the expected value, which is the row total. Multiply by column, column total, divide by your n. And when you're done, you can then calculate your chi-square test. And you will do that. Then, once you've done that, you can answer the following question, which is almost the same, it's related. So you go into uh, you you go into um, answer whether you are rejecting the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis. So <clears throat> the other thing is you need to look at the statement because with the statement they say we reject the null hypothesis we do not reject the null hypothesis media platform and personality are independent what else they didn't give you with this question is the information about the alpha i am sure i took everything everything else so if i go to the question sorry because i think i didn't copy everything from the question but you will look at your assignment question and answer that so let's see so So the question was just question 20, just ask you, consider the below statement. We reject the null hypothesis, we don't reject the null hypothesis. Media platform and this are it. But you need more information than that. So if they didn't give you enough information to reject, I don't know how you're going to find that you are going to reject the null hypothesis, unless if you're going to use all the, the test statistics or the critical values that they gave you, which is 10, 5, 2.1, and 1, to see if all of them, when you calculate the test statistic, do you reject the null hypothesis or not? So based on that information, you can come here and say, are you rejecting the null hypothesis and not rejecting the null hypothesis? 
and you will need to state which one of those statements are correct or incorrect. And those will be the last questions. Any question? Any question? If there are no questions, it is 10 to 10 to 2. Um, I have this one last exercise to give you. Let's see if you can do it in five minutes. So I'm giving you up until five to, to, do, the, to do this last exercise. And then five to will recap and conclude.
там. Come on, guys. How many of you are done? Only one person. Okay. But uh, do you want to give us the answer? And then we recap and conclude. A second chi-square test was calculated, and that is, and that was the answer for that chi-square test. It was 13.50. Assuming that there is a five degrees uh, freedom of uh, five degrees of freedom, which one of the statement is incorrect? So it means you're going to also do the same as what we did with the previous one. Go and look at the table for your critical value. So the first one, you're going to look at the critical value for 1%. So if the critical value for 1%, is it equals to that? Or for 5%, is it equals to that? Or for 10%, is it equals to that? And once you have found those critical values for those, then you can determine, especially for 1%, whether are you rejecting the null hypothesis or for 5% are you rejecting the null hypothesis? So 
we need to find the incorrect one. Uh, <clears throat> Sam, you are done. So it means you went and found the critical values. So what is the critical value for 1%? 15.086. That's right. So this is correct. And for 5%? 11.071. is correct. So that is correct. For 10%? 9.236 is correct. So that is correct. So now, since we know all this, so we're going to say for 1%, if this is our region of rejection created by the critical value of 15.086, where is 13.5? 13.5 falls inside here and it falls in the do not reject area. Okay. And the statement here it says HO can be rejected at 1.5. Therefore, this is the incorrect statement. If we look at number five, it says our critical value is 11.079. 11 so if we put 11.09 here, 11.071. Our 13.5 will fall somewhere inside the rejection area, and therefore H0 will be rejected at that point. So, which makes statement number four the incorrect one. So, you need to know how to find the critical value and how to use your critical value and your test statistics to make a decision. And with that, it concludes what we, we did today. So today we discussed how to apply the chi-square for independence. Remember, in your module, you only do chi-square for independence, where we we'll use the contingency table. If in the contingency table they didn't calculate the totals, you quickly calculate the totals because then the possibilities are you will be required to use the total to calculate the expected value. And we use those expected values to calculate the test statistic because the test statistic is your observed minus the sum of your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. To find the critical to find the critical value, we use alpha because we only have one side of the rejection area, so we just use alpha and the degrees of freedom. And remember, our degrees of freedom is number of rows minus one times number of columns minus one. And when you have your critical value, then you are able to clearly define where your region of rejection will be. And you will use the test statistic and your critical value to make your decision. And that's all what we done today with chi-square test. So by the end of today's session, you should are able to complete your assignment three and submit it. Please make sure that you submit it well in advance because if you wait for the, you wait for Friday, things might happen. So please go through your assignment. If you have any issues, remember you have the WhatsApp group to discuss. You have my UNISA to go through and discuss. Otherwise, thank you for coming. I will see you on Friday when we do linear regression. Then after that, every Saturday and every Friday, we're going to do exam preparation. Therefore, it means the majority of things that we're going to be doing on Fridays and Saturdays, I will post them on my UNISA as online assessment. We are going to go through those online assessments when we do the exam preparations. I will try and find as many questions as possible from the past exam paper and post them as online assessment. So every week before you come to class, you will have to go through that online assessment. Not this coming Friday, but from coming um, on not the coming Saturday, the coming Saturday we will do the exam prep uh, as like and recap. So we'll go through what we have covered so far, refresh our minds, look at how the composition of the past exam papers looked like, 
how you're going to write your exam. We're going to iron out all those things. Then the following weeks preceding to that one, we are going to do the assessment. Every week is assessment. So it means every Friday when you come to class, you should have already completed the online assessment. We're going to do those activities in class. We're going to get the answers because I realized that on my unit side doesn't give you the, the answers when you answer the, the online assessments. But we're going to go through them in class. So it means by the time we finish with all, all exam preparations, you would have answered all the past exam papers that I could get access to. And you would have answered most of them. Uh, question. In case UNISA decides to repeat one of the past exam paper, you would have answered all of them, so it should not be a problem. And it will give you time to practice and practice and practice. So every week there will be an assessment linked to the activities that we're going to be doing on every Friday and every Saturday. There will only be one assessment for that week, and then the following week we cover the other assessments, and then the following week we cover the other assessment. So every week it will be an assessment day. And with that, thank you guys for coming, and I will post the recording online tomorrow, actually, because today I'm very busy. Thanks, Anbani. Any questions? Thank and you, ma'am. There are no questions. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you.